Revelation 12. I want you to grab hold of something very important that this manual is three-dimensional. Not only talks about things that were, but things that are and things that are to come. But it's also a map. And when you are baptized and filled with the Spirit of God, scales come off of your eyes. And you're able to see beyond the letters. There is a map. There is so many things that God wants us to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Especially in the arena of times and seasons and, and events and and, and, and God always wants us to be ahead of everything that the enemy's doing. Or always know what he's doing so we can avoid any traps. Amen? Yeah. That's why it's so important to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. It's important to maintain newness. And when you lose thirst and hunger, you can always... Sh you, you, that's a warning. That is a warning. He said, if you're, listen, if you're not thirsty and hunger for his righteousness, for his presence, and, you're, and you've fallen back from the arena that you are not dependent on him, that you begin dependent on yourself in any area, that is dangerous. Because when that begins to happen, that's when the enemy begins to slide in. It says he is the most cunning beast God created. Lucifer was filled with wisdom. He saw everything. The earth is the center of all creation. It started with earth and everything else was done. Everything. The whole universe was centered off the earth. Because God's hands and seal was here. And Lucifer was the first angel created. He knows he knows all the genetics. He knows all the things of creation. He knows all, all the things, how things God created things. He was there when he created. And now that we have Lucifer, the one that was full, full of wisdom, now rules this earth and his demonic forces. But there's something you got to understand. He's outnumbered two to one. That's why he had to reproduce more. That's why he had to lie and promise more. That's why he had to send angels into the earth and around two of them to put on flesh and go into women and produce offsprings. And when those offsprings were killed in the flood, those offsprings became demons. And what was he trying to do? Reproduce himself because he was outnumbered two to one. So more and more believers come, more and more followers. See, there's three types of people. There's good, there's evil, and there's righteous. Three types of people. Good, evil, and righteous. That's it. The problem is the people that are good and evil are all lost. Only the righteous are saved. Because only the fruit of righteousness that is produced is by following him and believing him. That's it. Anything else that's followed is of the devil. He's a master deceiver. And we are reaching such a level of deception. It's phenomenal. There's such a level there uh, of deception and there's a level of righteousness. Remember, in the beginning of this year, the Lord gave us a word that it would be the year of the sword. Why? Because there are more believers coming out of the closet, believe it or not. They're finally getting filled with the Spirit and getting bold. They're sick and tired of being lied to, deceived, and watching their loved ones be taken out by demonic forces. People are coming into the church to begin to learn how to fight. And if you're not in a battle, you become a casualty. It is a time to rise up. Is it a it's a time to be bold. It's not a time to be fearful. But it's a time to know him. And know who you are in him. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 12 and verse 7. Would you read this with me, please? And war broke out in heaven. Hello. 
still going on. And it says, Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who is also Lucifer, who deceives the whole world. He deceives the whole world. Is he still deceiving the whole world? Yes. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So it's still going on. So you and I are fighting fallen angels. We are fighting demons. And we are fighting individuals that are deceived in following Satan's will. So there's a battle going on and it's not stopped. And it's not going to stop till the Prince of Peace touches his feet on the earth. Then it will stop for a thousand years. But not until then. In Ephesians chapter 5. In verse 1, would you read it with me? Therefore be what? Imitators of God as what? Dear children. In other words, be his offspring. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather a giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So anyone fulfilling the lust of the flesh has no access, it's been shut to them, in eternal life. None. Even if you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Why? Because who you serve when you die is where you go. Remember, the word believe means to what? Follow. So if you're not a follower, then you're not a believer. Is everybody okay? In verse 6, it says what? Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Now that means there, there's something about What's happening? He's saying, listen, man, don't let no one deceive you with empty words. In other words, there's a, a belief system. One of the things the enemy always tries to do is get into your belief system. Because if he can contaminate your belief system in any way whatsoever, if it can get, get you to get up into a place where you doubt any area of God, or you mix any doctrine of, hello? Because see, that's what New Age is. They take the doctrine of God and the doctrine of the devil and they try to mix it to deceive people. What happens is then your belief system becomes flawed. And when your belief system is flawed or contaminated, your perception of things is flawed. You can't see correctly. You can't hear correctly. And you can't follow. You'll be like this, just like a serpent. Or you'll be up and down. When a person's flawed belief system is established in them, they run and they lean more on what they feel than what truth is. And it causes them to fall. It causes them to be swayed away. It causes them to drift. It causes them to become complacent. It causes them to become compromising. Complainers and grumblers. See, we don't compare ourselves with anyone else. You compare yourself with Jesus. And we've got to come to a point where we, we, we've got to stop justification. And start recognizing things. And that's going to take spiritual perception. But if your perception of things is incorrect, it's because your belief system has been contaminated. And that's one of the ploys of the enemy. He comes to deceive. Why? To contaminate. To mix. Is everybody okay? 
So he says, look, be careful. Don't get deceived. Maintain a position as an offspring. Many are going to come to deceive, manipulate, or entice with empty words and promises. Don't agree or partake, but expose them. In verse 8, for you were what? Once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and what? Righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is even shameful to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as what? Wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? The days are what? The days are what? Evil. Days are evil. Listen, we live in a world that is ruled by Satan's kingdom. Every day is evil. Every day is impressing you. Every day they're trying to snare you. Every day they're setting a trap for you. Every day they're trying to exchange truth for a lie. Every single day while you're awake, while you sleep, wherever you go, whatever you see, wherever you hear, there's always an influence of demonic forces that's trying to to mislead me and you. Amen? That's why it's so important that you and I stay connected. People that are not connected are already deceived. They're already deceived. They've already contaminated their belief system. But I believe Jesus. I tithe. I do this. Does everybody understand? But even Jesus said, many are going to come before me and say, I know you. See, con being connected is essential. That's why we're to connect every morning. Amen? That's why he says, he who abides in me will have eternal life. Abide. Abide. Too many people, too many proclaimers of being know as Jesus, knowing Jesus is Lord and Savior. See, he's not Lord of their life. Because when he's Lord of your life, you're connected. When he's Lord of your life, he's the one that makes your decisions, not me and you. Amen? Oh, let's go a little further. Verse 17. Therefore, do not be what? Unwise, but understand what the will of God, what the will of the Lord is. That means we need wisdom, don't we? And this is not the wisdom of the world. You're not going to go to a college and get the wisdom that God has for you. Even some of these cemetery schools or seminary schools. It's the Holy Spirit that brings truth. It's the Holy Spirit in the presence of God that releases wisdom to me and you. I've ministered to many people who have been through cemeteries, sem seminary schools. And some of them are worse off condition than someone that's never been there. Because they know partial truth, they know some of the truth, but they ain't empowered with the Spirit. Because you know what? They've had more of a relationship with the letter than with the person. It's amazing. What would we do without the manual? Well, we'd know the one who wrote it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. At least I hope you know the one that wrote it. Look at verse 8. Read it with me. And do not be drunk with what? Wine. Wine. False. False perception. False presence of God. False joy. False peace. It's amazing how many people are oppressed. You know what they do? They drink and get more oppressed. Or they do drugs. And then, then they take medication that's oppressive. And the side effect is suicide. Be careful. I love those commercials, especially the ones that make you sleep. You know, the butterflies. I love those. those are, I mean, there's so much deception. They make things look so wonderful. They paint this picture. If you ever picked up a New Age book and looked through it, it's amazing. They got the third eye or the, what is it? The all, yeah, the all seeing eye. Yeah. This is, this, they got all these beautiful pictures and it's like, whoa, nice. But it's all lies. It's all deception. I mean, I went in this one place one time, picked it up and almost threw up. 
it was so, the presence of evil was so much on this book that I, I had dropped it right there. People are being deceived. Believers are backsliding. The world is getting worse. But there's a revival going on. There's a revival going on, man. And the whole thing is just stepping in it. I'm telling you, we're in revival. That's why you got to stay connected. You got to stay drinking. Go to Joel's place. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and do not be drunk with wine in what? In which is dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody where? In your heart to the Lord. In other words, there's praise always coming out of you. You're an instrument. I know sometimes we need to be tuned up. But we're still an instrument. We're an instrument of praise. That is the greatest sacrifice that you can do is praise. It's called the sacrifice of praise. The more you praise, the more you change. The more you sow, the more you reap. The more you praise, the more you drink. And we change. That's why we have to be reconnected all the time. It's not something where you go, listen, everybody has to drink water every day. If you don't, you die. Amen? People that don't drink a lot of water get sick easy. Because it's a way of flushing. It's why you're staying filled. Amen? It's amazing, but the devil will replace it with monster drinks, energy drinks. Let's get some energy. How about lifting your hands and praising God? Get the real drink. Oh, hallelujah. Therefore, don't be unwise, right? <laughs> In verse 20, giving thanks always to all things to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and submitting to one another in the what? Fear, reverence, honor, and respect. Fear, let me tell you, if you're walking in the fear of God, which is reverence, honor, and respect, it's not a terror of fear. You're going to check every one of your decisions. You're going to check everything you do. In fact, you're going to check it with Him. Amen? Amen. We need spiritual perception. Again, this is the area where we don't agree or partake, but we expose. Not only for ourselves, but for others. Doesn't mean you're going to go around and expose everybody's dirty laundry. Amen? So we need to be stay, stayed filled with the Holy Spirit. Spiritual perception is established by staying filled with the Spirit and your belief system. Has everybody got it? Because what you believe is what you perceive. So your perception is either going to be clear or it's going to be flawed. If you compromise, you're comprom they'll be compromised and it'll be blurry. Again, there's three types of people. Good, evil, and righteous. Amen? The good and evil are controlled by deception. That's why you hear many people say, I'm good. I'm a good, I'm a good person. And believe me, there's a lot of good people. But that doesn't mean that they're righteous. There must be a fruit of righteousness, which is the sign of the true DNA change in your life. Does everybody get it? So we see that the good and the wicked or, or evil are controlled by deception. The source is the devil. Amen. His purpose is to keep that flawed belief system so a person stays blinded. They can't see. Why? He affects vision. He affects sight. That's why the word says Jesus came to bring what? Sight. Sight. How many of y'all ever heard that a uh, picture is worth a thousand words? That's why Jesus spoke in parables to give an image and picture. Amen? And of course, the righteous, we know the source is Jesus, but they are freed by truth. They're not in captivity. They're not bound. They're not looking to be good. They're looking to follow so righteousness can be manifested. There's a difference. 
See, good people compromise. They think it's okay to party on weekends and then go to church on Sunday and everything's over. They think it's okay to uh, open their hearts up to secular music and demonic forces and, and this and that and whatever, sing whatever they want to sing, watch whatever they ever want to watch. And they're actually contaminating their belief system because that's what the devil does. He contaminates it. And when he contaminates it, it becomes mixed anointing. And they can't see clearly. The only thing they can see is about three feet ahead of them because anything past that is all themselves. It's only themselves. What can I do for me? What can I have for me? And how can I promote me? Of course, you'll see them plaster faces all over flesh book. It's all about me. Genesis 15. Amen. Spiritual perception is also known as discernment. Amen? <laughs> yeah. Sure got hot in here. Okay. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? <laughs> Genesis 15 and verse 1. Whew. Would you read it with me? After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in vision. Why? He was able to what? See. Saying, do not be what? Afraid. Abram, I am your shield. You're exceeding great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me? See, and I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offsprings. Indeed, one born in my house is not my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who is, will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now, toward the heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And Abram believed in the Lord and it was counted to him for what? Righteousness. righteousness. It was counted to him as righteous because he what? He believed. Because he believed the truth so it was counted to him. Why? Because he did. He followed. Then, then the Lord said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the children and will give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? Now listen. What has happened is when we come to the Lord, the Lord brings us out of what we call Egypt or Babylon. The world is actually Babylonian system. It's a demonic system. It's also associated with the Roman Empire. Amen. It's also associated with Egypt. Egypt, the word Egypt means bondage also. There was known as the house of Egypt. There was the house of bondage. And the Lord always had to rescue his people and come and get them out of the bondage, didn't he? Why? Because they were rebellious. They served other gods and it went into bondage. Because their perception was incorrect. They couldn't follow him long enough. And so in this, God always had to send Someone to lead them out. And Jesus came to lead all of us out. So it would be the final lead out. And he left his spirit for me and you to be led for the rest of our days. Amen? So he believed the creator and it was counted to him as righteousness. In other words, Abram believed the words of God in his voice. He believed the words of God and his voice. In Romans 12. Spiritual perception. Romans 12 and verse 1.
Is everybody there in verse 1? Would you read it with me? 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility, a reasonable service. See, when your flawed system, when your belief system is flawed, you don't do that. You don't present yourself to him. Because you're thinking of you all the time. Instead of giving you, you're supposed to be walking away from the old man all the time. So you're to present your spirit, soul, body, and possessions to him. They're his as a living sacrifice. Amen. It's something we do every single day. That's why in our prayer we make contact. And don't come to him in the morning and say, hi, I'm your humble servant. Remember, puke, <laughs> disgusting, prideful, arrogant. You don't have to tell God you're humble. Amen. Amen. Verse 2. And do not be what? Conformed. conformed to this world. Why? Because you were taken out of this world. Why conform yourself to it again? But what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in other words, everything is associated with what you think. What you believe. What you perceive. Everything revolves around all of that. Amen? Amen. We need to renew. We need to judge and, and, and discern the area of what we think. Because if you're agreeing with something that's contaminating, you become contaminated. Then your sight is contaminated, your hearing is contaminated, and your walk is contaminated. Amen. Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17. Is everybody okay? Let's read it together. This I say therefore in what? Testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their what? Their mind. In other words, they're still thinking carnally. Again, there are carnal Christians. People that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, but they still have a carnal mind. They're not renewed it yet. They're still living according to worldliness. They think that they can take Jesus and live according to the world's way. It don't work that way. Jesus said, come into my world. He ain't going in your world. Verse 18. And having their what? Understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God. Because of the what? Ignorance. Ignorance. That is in them because of the blindness of their heart. So you got to understand when the belief system is contaminated, there's, by ignorance, there's blindness. Their perception is not true. It's flawed. They can't see things all the way through. They think worst first. And they stay there for a long time. Verse 19. Who being what? Past feeling. Why? They rely on what they feel. They try to deny it, but they're really relying on what they feel because their belief system is contaminated because they can't see all the way through, so they're relying more on what they feel than what is truth. If we would begin to think, what did God say? What did God say? What did God say? What did God say? Not what man says. What did God say? That's who I am. What God says, not what man says. Does everybody get that? Everyone say, I am. I am. Or what God says. What God says. Not, what not what man says. Seal it. Oh, yeah. Having their understanding dark and being alienated. Ooh. And being past feeling, have, have given themselves over the what? Lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Look at what he said here, the next verse, verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ. You've not so learned the anointing. You're not staying connected. You're not walking in the spirit. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, 
as the truth is in Jesus that you what? Put off. Who puts it off? Your neighbor? Does your pastor supposed to put it off? No. We're to put it off. We're responsible. To put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to grows what? Corrupt because it's been contaminated. According to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the, look at this, this is powerful, renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because you have a new spirit now. It is in renewing in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the what? The new man which is created according to God and true, true, true righteousness and holiness. Why? Because if there's truly a fellowship, if there's truly, if we're cleansed, if, if there's contaminations have been exposed, there's always a fruit of righteousness. Always. No longer associate with the life of evil, wicked, or of the world, wickedness of the world. Because the source is the enemy, the devil, Satan, Lucifer. So we're to put off these sources and put off this old way of thinking. Put off this old man and renew in the spirit of the mind. That's by being baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's why many believers have come only a short distance. They accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but he's, they're really not Lord yet because Lord comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Other than that, they're just their Savior. But that's why he, he will never force you to go deeper. He'll never force you to want any more of him. He'll never do that. But he does invite you. Amen? It's amazing. Think about this. How many people will wait in line to get food stamps? How many people will wait in line to get Social Security? How many people will wait in line for hours to get a handout? But they won't wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit to come. If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I suggest you go home, get in your closet, shut the door until he comes and baptizes you. Because sometimes he's just saying, show me. Show me you're serious. Show me. And those scales will come off and there'll be a thirst and hunger that no man can fulfill. No amount of money can fill. You can't be bought no more by the world. Amen? Oh, Glory. If I take off here, just carry on. <laughs> Woo! Everybody cool? Aren't you hot? Sheesh, kebab. Glory. All right. Let's go a little further. Uh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> First Peter chapter one. Whew. First Pete chapter one. Yes. You know, after my visitation of baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord put me on a plane. <laughs> Sent me to this girl in New Mexico. She happened to be my ex-wife. I got off the plane. She looked at me and called me an alien. She knew it was me, but there was something different about me. And when I shared with her, listen, I can't have sex. I can't do this. I can't. She said, well, what would you come for? Snap. <laughs> She's the one that sent me the tickets. <laughs> I was expecting to go to prison for the rest of my life or for another four years. Yeah, you can hide now, honey. That's okay. <laughs> so she want, we wanted to seal a goodbye, I guess. I don't know. But I was going there because I owed it to her to tell her the truth. And I was out on bail, getting ready to go back to court. Supposed to do a mandatory minimum four-year prison term. 
But again, because I couldn't be bought no more. No sex, none of that could sway me. No amount of money. I didn't have any money. I was out of everything. I was living with cardboard boxes in my home. I used to have everything. I pawned my jacuzzi, everything. You kidding? <laughs> when Kate got home, she goes, how'd they get that out of here? I said, don't worry. When you want to get it out of there, you can. <laughs> I would have pawned the rugs if I could have tore them off. If they weren't destroyed already from all the wax because I didn't have any electricity. I was down, dirty, and done. I lived to get high. Now I still live to get high. But it's the greatest. I live for his presence. I don't want to lose his presence. When, I, when that presence drifts from me, I'm miserable. And you can ask my wife that too. I try not to, exp I just shut up. She still asks me, what's the problem? But she knows. It's, what I'm trying to share with you is that when you are filled with the Spirit of God, you don't get bought out no more. Nothing buys you out. You are sold out. And you hold on to that no matter what. No matter what. Why? You want to maintain the fruit of righteousness no matter what because you live to please Him. Not because it's a matter of life and death or hell or heaven. It's a matter of you love Him. You're so grateful of the life that he's rescued you from. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Would you read it with me? Therefore, what? Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as what? Obedient children. Listen, you're not obedient because you gotta be, because you wanna be. Not conforming yourselves to the former loss. As what? Your ignorance. That means there's flaw. When there's ignorance, it's flawed perception. Flawed belief system. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who, without partiality, judges according to each one's work. Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in what? Fear of the Lord. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for us, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead. There wasn't anyone else raised from the dead, except for who Jesus raises from the dead, except for the ones that were raised, were raised with him. When he rose, those that were in Jerusalem also rose too. Because resurrection power, there was a ripple effect all over the place. Through him, believe God who raised him from the dead and grave him glory and gave him glory, so that your faith and your hope are who? In God. Since you have purified your souls and obeying, obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of bro the brethren, love one another fervently with a what? With a pure heart. See, when there is contamination, the heart is not pure. It's like a disease. It's not pure. In other words, we have no more excuses of ignorance. We have no more excuses of deception or enticement, of following the world's belief system that promotes blindness and flawed perception. There is no excuse. God has made way for everyone to know. Amen. In Acts 17. Acts chapter 17. Spiritual perception. Acts 
in verse 22. Acts 17, verse 22, was it say, Then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very what? Religious. Religious. In other words, you're very bound. <laughs> I see that you're very bound by your flawed belief systems. For I was, as I was passing through the, and considering all the objects of worship, objects of worship, I even found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. Those objects of worship were called idols. People have many idols in their life and they don't even realize it. That idols will contaminate your belief system and contaminate your perception. Where I wants before anything, it's what he wants. When I gets before him, it contaminates. Because you can be your worst idol. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I'm going to proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it since he is Lord of heaven and earth does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has de de uh, Determine their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwelling. So that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might find him or grope for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said. For we are also his, what? Offsprings. We are also his offsprings. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art and man's devisings. Truly, these times of what? Ignorance. God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent. Turn away. Because he's an appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. He's going to judge the world in what? Righteousness. So you will be judged whether you are manifesting the fruit of righteousness or not. By the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this by all, by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, we will hear this matter again later. Because they didn't understand some of it. These times of ignorance got overlooked but now, not anymore. He's not overlooking these anymore. He's like saying, you know what? Tighten up. It's time. Repent, turn, and follow. Remove yourself from the flawed belief systems and receive sight, vision, and purpose, which will bring spiritual perception of life of Christ Jesus. Many people have given themselves over to paganism. It's an influence, an infiltration that the enemy establishes. Do you realize that today is one of the most pagan days that there is? That I'm not going to go into it, but you can go to eternallibrary.org and on there we have a video called Easter. Easter Exposed. I, I encourage you to watch it. Because Jesus isn't crucified until 23 days from now. This is one of the worst pagan holidays where children are sacrificed and their blood, eggs are dipped in it. When people really know the deception of Satan's kingdom and how he gets people to worship his specific days. Now we canceled today. And again, God judges the heart. Amen? 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 God judges the heart. So we acknowledge him no matter what. He's my res I walk in, we walk in resurrection power all, every day. Uh, the, he is the Lord of the Sabbath, so that means the word Sabbath means rest, so we're in Sabbath every single day. I don't have to have a specific day. But there's something that Jesus did. He came to fulfill the feast of the Lord. He came to fulfill the feast. 
And resurrection day is called the Feast of First Fruits, which is not till April 24th. And if you want to come by and celebrate it that day, I'd gladly do that. So we're, and it's on a Sunday. So we're going to celebrate the Feast of First Fruits, the day Jesus rose from the dead on April 24th. Amen. And we're going to have a celebration on that day. The real day. The day that honors the King of Glory. Not the sacrifice of children's in Satan's kingdom. And we ain't hunting for no rabbits. <laughs> or looking for eggs. Hello? We're hunting for the presence of God. Yes! And you can look all this in Leviticus 23. You can learn all. Listen, Lent is a lie. There's no such thing as Lent. It's ridiculous. People walking around with ashes on their head. Deceived deceived. They're just showing how ignorant they are. Does everybody under, ignorant of what? Truth. Most of them go to a, a church and, and they hear a couple of scriptures, go home and never even open their Bible or never even ser- seek out truth. They don't even know. They don't know. They're worshiping a pay. They say, well, it's because of the 40 days. Jesus has nothing to do with it. In fact, the 40 days Jesus was in the wilderness is not even near That was what? Three years <laughs> before, his resur- before his death and resurrection. It's got nothing to do with it. So how can you have Lent of a 40 days that Jesus was in the wilderness before? It doesn't even make sense. More paganism. Oh, I could go on with this stuff. Go to Proverbs 1. <laughs> Jesus said, do not worship demons. Or sacrifice to demons. Proverbs chapter 1. Is everybody okay? I might have busted your bubble on Easter, but now you know the truth. Eshtar. That's what it really is. That's where that comes from, Eshtar. You look that up. Of course, you can just go to the website and you can see the whole video on it. Glory. You came for the truth, right? It's training for reigning. Proverbs 1, verse 2. What does it say? To know wisdom and instruction, to what? Perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. To give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase what? Learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their Riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be graceful, be a graceful ornament on your head and chains around your neck. We need to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. What does God say in Hosea 4 6? My People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Malachi 3. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. In verse 16. Is everybody okay? Would you read it with me? 
Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my what? Jewels. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern or have what? Spiritual what? Perception. Has everybody got that? Between the righteous and the what? Wicked. The righteous and the wicked. Why? Only one produces righteousness. Between one who serves God and one who does not serve God. That's why we have to be careful because associations bring impartations. The Lord warns us. Amen? Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Oh, yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. You know, you think about all the years that when we were in the world celebrating Halloween and dressing up like a demon. Amen. <laughs> all the little kids. Yeah, it's a sincere, innocent kids walking around with witches and accursed items. Frankenstein. He used to be my favorite when I was a kid. <laughs> my dad and I used to sit up late at night and watch Fright Night. Of course, I couldn't sleep for days. I walked in fear. But we didn't know these things. We were being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 13, would you read it with me? It says, These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the what? Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual, which gives you spiritual perception. Verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. The carnal mind cannot receive. And too many believers, so-called believers, are still walking in the carnal mind because they're not willing to renew it with the Word. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. They just think, ah, it's really not. It's a, yeah, I believe in Jesus. That's all I need to do. So it's just somebody asked me if I believe in Jesus. I, I believe in Jesus. But do you follow? Do you connect? But you're really not a believer. Because if you're not producing the fruit of righteousness, something ain't right. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who spiritually judges all things, yet he himself was rightly judged by no one. Why? Because he knows God judges him. Amen? God judges. That's relationship, isn't it? But the natural man, the carnal man, cannot get a carnal Christian is still natural mind. And they live in a safe state, not a born-again state. Is everybody okay? Glory. Let's go to uh, John chapter 8. So one of the things we always want to find out is what is the source of everything? What's the source of music? What's the source of uh, books? What's the, sor what's the source? Because whatever the source is, is what's is either going to be contaminated. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong, because there are some secular flicks that are home, you know, whatever. And, 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 and God can use anything to train, amen? amen? Everything's about training. If you have a heart to always want to learn, if you have a heart to always want to learn, that's a heart after God. 
I always want to learn. I want to know more. I want to know more about you, and I want, I want to know about, about what you want me to do. I want to know about more what, what you want me to express. I, I want to know more. And, you know, sometimes you have not because you ask not. So many times people are waiting on God, and God is waiting on us. And in the book of the Gospel of John, in verse 8, and chapter 8, in verse 43. Jesus says something powerful. Uh, let's start at 42. He said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Remember, Jesus did not come to fulfill his will. He came to fulfill the will of the Father. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. And what he meant by, why don't you understand my speech? Is in other words, why don't you obey what I ask? You are of your father the what? The devil. And your desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and a father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Wow. Hebrews 13. There are many self-promoting doctrines out there. Even false witnesses, false prophets, false pastors, false teachers. In Hebrews 13, many New Age movements Demonic movements, all the sources of Satan's kingdom. <laughs> Hebrews 13 and verse 7, it says what? Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away about with what? Various and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of what? Praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Well pleased. 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Spiritual perception. Again, we are not only in the latter days, but we are in a, it's almost like the latter hours, man. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, what does it say? Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Does everybody see that? It's happening big time. People are getting moved out of position. Influence, being contaminated 
And they don't even realize when the contamination comes and their flawed belief system, system begins to establish or grab hold, it's releasing a false doctrine as it's doctrines of demons. Second John. We must be very careful. Second John, Epistle of John, Second John, and verse 7. What does he say? For many deceiver, deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things which we work for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the, the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Do you know how many people are out there and don't even abide in what God has written? And they call themselves believers. They are deceived. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Now, we know that when, I mean, you usually see them coming. You know, they park their cars way down at the end. They get out and they start coming. Just get prepared. Amen? Just have something written. Make sure you got something, something you want to give to them before they run from you. Get something in their hand. Amen? Amen? And I want to close it. 2 Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a Righteous requirement by God, starting at verse 14. What does it say? Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. If you do this. If you what? Come out from among them. Come out of these paganism holidays. Come out from among them. Come out from Babylon. And don't touch. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch and agree with what is unclean. And then I will receive you. I will visit you. I will answer your prayers. I'll be a father to you. And you will be my children, my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear and reverence to God Almighty, as he is number one and should always be number one. Never losing your first love. When you begin to drift, you know it. Amen? It's not by works. It's by seeking. That's all it is, seeking. Amen? And if you're seeking and finding and you're getting filled, you will produce a fruit of righteousness. You won't be relying on how you feel. You'll be led by the Spirit of God, and in so be doing that, you'll be called sons of God. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Thank you so much. I pray, Father, that the seeds that imparted in us today be protected by the blood of Jesus, that they will grow and bear fruit for your glory. And then you would change every area and expose and remove every flawed belief system in us that we may perceive, 
see and receive according to your will and not our own or any doctrine of demonic forces in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen.